You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Wednesday, the 2nd of February, 2018. We're looking at the weekly chart going back two years. You haven't seen a down candle of this magnitude in all that time. We see the price percent oscillator is rotating way over. If you recall, my friends, at the close of the day yesterday, that is Monday, we saw a big crossover underway, however, that has pulled back. And again, what did we caution you? Don't catch a falling knife, because guess what? The S&P 500 was up for the day 1.97%. It closed at 169.13. And again, you can look on our chart and it says 169.29. That is the Heiken Ashi registration. Remember, we use Heiken Ashi candlesticks for a good reason. They show us the average pace. That's what Heiken Ashi means in Japanese, as I understand it. I don't, I'm not fluent in Japanese, but that's what I have been told. And that's what it shows. That's the beautiful thing about Heiken Ashi candlesticks. We have a great training at the chartingwealth.com website. So we see that that big, strong crossover from yesterday has pulled back. It pulled back on Tuesday. Derivative oscillator still very much in the negative. Negative price percent oscillator is a, appears to be crossing over, going down, but it's only the second day of a three-day candle. Now, I'm just thinking it may very well do that by the end of the week. We'll just have to see. Again, we don't know. That's why we don't gamble. That's why we trend follow. We don't forecast. Sometimes we'll say forecasting, but actually it's trend following. Everything else is gambling in my view. So that's where we are on the weekly chart on the S&P 500 right now. What do we see on the two-day chart? Well, we see the candle, the this candle now on the 6th, is starting to form as far as the two-day candle goes, this first day of the latest two-day candle. And what we see going on there is a down candle for the day. The prior candle depicts Friday and Monday, and that is the one ending on the 5th, Monday. And this is the latest two-day candle is another strong down candle. We did have that crossover going down with the candle that ended on Monday the 5th. And so far, the first day of the latest two-day candle, strong down, price percent oscillator going down, not at the same steep angle it had been before, but still heading down markably. Derivative oscillator gaining lots of downward momentum. Uh, we have breached, of course, our two-day and weekly trend lines big time. We look at the four-hour chart. What do we see? Down movement in the morning and some recovery in the afternoon. Price percent oscillator is not moving at the same strong angle it had been over the course of the day on Monday. And we see that the derivative oscillator has also started losing some of its downward momentum. So again, we'll continue to watch. Remember, we don't have a weekly vertical crossover until we have a crossover, and that doesn't happen until potentially the end of the week. So we'll continue to wait and watch. And again, smart money doesn't try to catch the falling knife. Don't know where things are going, but we can follow the trends to lead us in the right directions. And you guys recall us saying over and over and over again, when all the particularly those four weeks uh, ending the 5th of January, the 12th, the 19th, and the 26th, when everything was just unbelievably exuberance and up movement, we kept saying, when's this rollback coming? Because like everything that goes up, it must come down at some point. Okay, from the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ 100 is depicted by QQQ. It was up hugely today. Remember, it was down about 4% yesterday, up 2.65%. It's actually not crossing over anymore on the weekly. Now, it may be by the end of the week, and if it is, great. Those of you who are... Uh, signed up for our text service, and you do that by texting the word charting wealth to the number 33222. And again, if you're a subscriber, which you can be for free, all the directions are there, goes out every day in the weekly, in the daily email. 
goes out every day for the daily market review. Now, we see that the price percent oscillator getting close to crossing over going down. Derivative oscillator has crossed over going down. We have a red down candle the first uh, again after the first two days of the week with a long wick on the bottom. We'll see how much smaller this candle gets as the week goes along. It could get bigger, but we do see a rebound of sorts. I mean, a lot of that loss rebounded. And you got to feel sorry for the folks that, that literally sold at the bottom because they're kicking themselves in the head right now, wondering why they did that. So again, we'll just continue to watch. We gave our folks, you, plenty of warning signs for your virtual trades. What do we see going on on the two-day chart? And again, the first day of the latest two-day candle, again, a strong bid, big red down candle, a little bit larger than the prior one ending on the 5th. We see that the derivative oscillator has gained downward momentum, the price percent oscillator not going down at the same steep angle. It's lost some of that. And as we look at the four hour chart, what do we see? Well, lots of down movement in the morning and then a green doji indecision tending up in the afternoon. And we see that the queues closed at 162.31, $162.31. So again, that's where we are on the queues. We'll continue to watch and wait. We may have some weekly vertical crossovers. Again, we'll note those on our texting service for everybody who signed up and subscribed for free. If you live out of the United States, again, we announce all those weekly vertical crossovers on the comprehensive review and forecast that we record at the close of the market every Friday afternoon for you. So you'll get them also. Don't fret. We'll make sure you know. It's just the text messaging can only go out here in the U.S. So from the Qs to TLT, and what do we see? Bonds continuing to move down, down 0.62%, closed at 119.96 as far as the price goes. And again, we see the price on our Heiken Ashi candlesticks at 119.90. What do we see happening? Well, we had that weekly vertical crossover back on the 5th of January, and we continue to see things move down. We're going to have to redraw our trend line because it's much steeper going down, which is good for the short positions that you should be practicing in your practice trade, continuing to move down strongly, derivative oscillator gaining energy, price percent oscillator not going down at the same steep angle it had been the prior week, but still a steep angle, and that is beautiful to see. In that short position, what do we see on the two-day chart? Derivative oscillator continuing to gain energy. We see that the latest candle, are we going to see a bottoming out here? Don't know. 129.26 is where we, I'm sorry, 120.22 is where we see things. Something like that, 122, uh, 120.22 to 120.26. Golly, day. Anyway, we see things bottoming out around the 120 mark. How's that? And we see that the price percent oscillator continuing to head down strongly with the derivative oscillator well below the weekly and the two-day trend line. So again, just keep your eye on the price. Just the first day of the latest two-day candle there. For our chart, however, that's where we're seeing that sort of bottoming out. We see how things were up a little bit in the afternoon on the 5th and then up in the morning and the afternoon on the 6th, but not enough energy to cross over. So again, keep your eye on the four-hour chart and on the two-day chart. Of course, all the charts all the time, the weekly chart too, but watch this four-hour chart. You don't want to see too much backtracking and loss. And again, don't have a crossover yet. Price percent oscillator is flat. Derivative oscillator is losing downward momentum, however. So pay attention. Continue to be watchful, and we'll continue to give you warnings if indeed it is time to pull out of that practice trade. And remember, those of you who've been with us a while, you know that we always say practice trade. Why? Because we're not a stock calling service. We don't hold ourselves out for that. We don't do that. We're an education firm. Sometimes I have people write me and ask me what they should do in their trades, and I will tell them, I can't tell you. I'm happy to talk about the ETFs that we cover here and help you with your simulated trades, but not actual trades. We want you to practice with us, read books, study with other people, 
Practice, practice, practice. Use our daily market worksheets, our weekly market worksheets, our trade worksheets. That's if you want to really supercharge your training. Maybe you just want to listen to me as background noise because that's about how good we are if you don't use those daily and weekly market worksheets and practice trades all the time that you actually are able to look and see, I can actually do this. And of course, when you get good at it and you can make trade after trade after trade successfully, and you want to use the knowledge we've taught you and all the other things you've learned and go out there and spend your real money, that's totally up to you. What do we see going on on gold? Down 1.05%. We, of course, breached the weekly trend line back there on the second, particularly at the beginning of the week. We saw that happen on the new weekly chart. We sort of ended the week, well, right there at it. And then, of course, the new week shows a breach in that trend line and the two-day trend line also. And we see now the price percent oscillator headed down. We see the derivative oscillator losing momentum. And as we go from the weekly chart in gold to the two-day, we see now that we have the, the makings of a two-day crossover going down. We portended that warning yesterday when we had that breach of the weekly trend line and, of course, a breach also of the two-day trend line. And now we see that the price percent oscillator is being crossed over going down, derivative oscillator also lots of downward momentum. Not pretending well, and we had a great run-up from the 5th of January, and again, somewhere around, what, the 125 mark or so, all the way up to $129.52, something along those lines. So again, a great run-up in gold. Now we see that rolling over, heading down. And again, those warning signs have been there. What do we see on the four-hour chart? It has never crossed over. In fact, it has, <laughs> by hook or crook, started working again once it crossed over on Monday the 29th of January. It slid sideways for quite a while, dropped again on the second morning of the second, and of course again a big drop on the morning of the sixth. So our four-hour chart, maybe, and again, what do we tell you over and over again? In order to have these oscillators work, particularly the price percent oscillator, We've got to have movement. We've got to have trending. It doesn't work when things are sliding sideways. It's very hard to use an oscillator when you don't have oscillation. So what we see going on now is, of course, that downward movement. Again, we don't have a crossover on the four on the weekly chart yet. Do have on the two-day. Previously had one on the four-hour chart. So again, we'll continue to keep our eye on gold and let you know the next time that we have a potential position in it. But with a two-day now crossing over, going down, and again, hasn't happened yet, can't confirm it, but it sure looks like it's probably going to happen. That is going to take us out of the running for jumping into an up move. Now, could things change tomorrow before this candle is drawn? Could there be a huge boom up in gold and pull back? The price percent oscillator on the two-day chart? Yes, there could. And then again, you might have a potential jumping in point there. So we'll just wait and watch and see. Doubtful that gold's going to give us another jumping in point going up in the near future, but it might. We'll just continue to watch things, folks. That's where we are at the end of the day on Tuesday the 6th as we go into Wednesday the 7th of February. We love to hear from you. If questions, problems, concerns, just write us, cw at chartingwealth.com. We are here for you. If you're not already a subscriber, man, you need to be. It puts you on the forefront of getting all of the training as it comes out, whether it's a new chapter of the book or it's a new training or it's a revised training or stuff we want to really call your attention to. We're here for you. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.